What be up, Domino fans? I'm Stick Trick Domino Dude. Most people build dominoes on their own since there are very few domino builders throughout the world, but on some occasions you may participate in a domino event with a larger group. In January of 2019, I had the opportunity to build in Hevish 5's Team Week. We built many domino projects, including most notably the most satisfying domino project ever, a 35,000 domino project that took seven people three days to build. It is a different experience building with a large group, and you also encounter different challenges throughout the building process. Building that project was quite a task, and today I will give in detail the problems we ran into while building that project, and what we learned from it. This is the hidden work behind the most satisfying domino project ever. When you're building for a live audience, you have one key obstacle that you need to get around. You have a time constraint. Domino builders almost always finish their events before the original deadline, but sometimes that comes at a cost, namely staying past midnight the night before the event. There are many different problems that can occur during a live event, but they all come together to create one larger problem, which is a rushed fourth quarter of the building process, which can be a safety issue. Now, back to the satisfying domino project, I'm going to take you into the mindset that we as a group had going into the building. We all had come to Team Week to build dominoes just for the sake of building dominoes, and we pretty much had free reign over whatever project we wanted to build. So unlike other domino get-togethers, it didn't feel like a job, so there wasn't always a lot of pressure to always be building. A specific instance when we wasted a bit of time was when we ordered food for lunch. Sometimes it took us over two hours since we were taking our time figuring out our choices. Then, once we had gotten lunch, we spent a little bit more time socializing after we'd finished eating, because meals were our main time for talking. Even though we were staying till 8 o'clock, generally, we probably could have built more than we did each day. Now, if that were the only thing slowing us down, we probably would have been fine. Because after all, most group events, with the exception of two-thirds of BMAC, have all planned out fields, structures, and have also planned out the overall layout. But this was not the case with this project. Our thought behind the theme of the Satisfying Project is that we are some of the greatest domino minds in the world, and imagine what we could do if we put our minds together to create a seriously entertaining project, and not just one with a bunch of fields. We decided to go with the idea of building satisfying domino tricks, since that would be A, extremely entertaining, and B, that's something that the average viewer would click on. This great theme, however, came with a cost. We had to make up the project as we built it. We had to come up with a small spreadsheet beforehand with ideas for tricks, but we only used a few suggestions from that. So during the building process, we had to come up with what to build, where to build it, what order to build it in, and also explain to the people who were helping build the tricks in question what we were building. But probably an even bigger factor of why the Satisfying Domino Project took so long is because quite literally everything in the setup was freehanded in some way, shape, or form. The only thing that was set up with a template was the color-changing crossover field, and even that had a complex field starter that took a while to set up, and I spent two hours making the field plan at the venue. For anyone at home who has not built dominoes before, we domino builders can build with templates a lot faster than doing dominoes one by one by hand. And generally, in big live domino events, there are a lot of opportunities to use templates. The most satisfying domino project, however, had next to none. Something about this event that is unique to others, besides TDT, is that we were building for multiple domino projects at once. We started building the Satisfying project the first day, but we also had three people working on the Impossible Triangle, which took two days for them to build and also position perfectly. Our original plan was to always have something being built in the main floor area and also the cycloramic wall but we recognized that if we kept building in the cycloramic wall, we wouldn't be able to finish the Satisfying Domino Project in time. So, after we finished building the Impossible Triangle, everyone worked on the main floor. It certainly didn't help that we had accidentally knocked down part of the Impossible Triangle while building it. It actually happened five minutes after I had originally walked through the venue door, so you guys can decide what that means. Speaking of premature knockdowns, they are almost inevitable when you're building a big project which is why we generally leave enough time to compensate for them. This event, we had a bit more fails than usual. We knocked down part of the dark circle field, part of the lighter circle field, part of the color-changing crossover field, the Sonomod on the fall wall twice, the Soniverse, some of that ice line, and most notably, these intersecting half-pyramids. 
This was an interesting case, because twice we had moved to their location after we had started building them, and so they became a last-minute addition to the project. While three people were building the trick in its final location, we knocked it down with only a few hours left to build. Some of us voted that we not rebuild it since we were running out of time, but we ultimately decided on building it because otherwise the space would look weird being empty. That should give you an idea of the amount of perfection we were going for. I remember we knocked down one of the curvy ice lines because it just didn't look that pretty, and so we rebuilt it. In the end, our consequence for all this perfection was a night when we stayed past 12.30 a.m. building, as well as a fall down three hours behind schedule. We had an audience for this project, and we were able to let them know when to come, but the last day felt very rushed. But as always, with any great domino project, seeing an almost perfect fall down makes all of that work worth it. Literally the only thing that didn't work was a part of this circle field, which we fixed in post, and the sodomod on the fall wall fell a little early. This setup was exhausting to build, but given the opportunity, I would do it again and again and again. If you were thinking of hosting a domino event, keep in mind all of these factors. Be sure to leave enough time to rebuild fails. Build long hours if you need to. Maybe keep the lunch break short, but in my opinion, do not sacrifice the quality of the project for a slightly less stressful build. Have fun building in those domino events probably the best part of a domino hobby. I'm Stick Trick Domino Dude, and I'm signing out. Peace.